Located on the northeastern coast of Spain is the city of Barcelona, known for its stunning architecture, rich culture, and bustling streets. It's often considered one of the most vibrant cities in Europe, but Barcelona needs saving. Like many other cities around the world, it's being overrun by cars. Increased traffic, worsening air pollution, rising temperatures, and a lack of green spaces are just some of the problems it faces. Problems which are already having deadly consequences. The key to saving Barcelona lies within its iconic city design. A design which was formed in the 1800s. A visionary urban planner from nearly 200 years ago will be fundamental to the sustainable green oasis that Barcelona is on track to become. Welcome to the future of Barcelona, Superblocks. Before we can understand how Barcelona's streets are being saved, we must first understand how they were built. To do that, we must travel back to the 1800s. Barcelona was a bad place to live. There was rising discomfort in its growing population, confined to its medieval walls. It was limited and it needed to change, fast. To put in perspective how bad it was, the mortality rate for people of better social stances was just 36 years old. The council ran a competition to design its expansion. This is where legendary city planner Ildefonse Sedar stepped up. This is a man who would go on to write a book called The General Theory of Urbanization. He knew what he was talking about. To plan the expansion of Barcelona, he carried out an extremely exhaustive study of living conditions. One of his findings shows how bad the expansion was needed in the city. He believed six cubic meters of space was needed per person. At that time, the working class had just 0.9 each. His study covered many other elements of having a successful, happy city, such as interior design and optimal street width for airflow. What you're seeing now is what Sadar's plan looks like. The most striking and obvious thing is the grid design, which differs from other major cities which opt for a radial design. His choice of a grid design was a practical one. They are easy to navigate and they are easy to build on for further expansion. The choice would turn out to be critical for the future of Barcelona, which we will get onto later in this video. Diving deeper into the grid design reveals Sadar's ultimate motive of equality. At the time, Barcelona had an exaggerated class system which determined where you lived, how you dressed, who you spoke to, etc. Sadar wanted to dismantle this. He did not want to build outwards from the old city, as this would just create a hierarchy of sorts. Instead, he used a grid pattern to connect seven smaller villages, which at the time were not of great significance. He forged a design which wasn't an expansion out of the city. Instead, it all became the city. It would be totally wrong to say Sadar invented the grid system, but his was unique. Inside his grid, there were three different types of city block. These would combine in different ways to create unique, larger structures for green spaces. His expectation was that many of the city blocks would only have two sides, allowing for ease of access for pedestrians, and also allow for high quality airflow. Each block would have plenty of green space and be low enough to allow sunlight in. Schools and hospitals would be evenly distributed. Evidently, there was a core focus on improving the quality of life. At this point, you might be thinking, this video is all wrong. Barcelona doesn't look like this free-flowing combination of city blocks that I am describing. And, well, you'd be right. Despite the grid pattern being evident in modern day Barcelona, there are many of Sadar's other plans which are missing. As you can imagine, like pretty much any plan for the greater good of the people, external pressures lead to modifications. Sadar's blocks were made taller, allowing for less sunlight in between, and most of them were four-sided, not two, hindering the airflow and pedestrian access. What you're seeing now is an example of one of Sadar's blocks and how it ended up looking due to commercial demands. While Sadar's high quality of life city plan did not materialise, it is a fascinating attempt at human urban planning and it laid the groundwork for the future of Barcelona. So it's fair to say, Barcelona was saved by Sadar, but its modifications in this growing world 
has meant Barcelona needs saving once more. In 2014, Barcelona and its surrounding municipalities consistently failed to meet the EU's air quality target. The air quality was so bad that it was causing 3,500 premature deaths per year. Another side effect of streets packed with cars is a lot of noise pollution. The Council of Barcelona once again needed to devise a plan. The goal was to have 81.54% of all journeys to be on foot, bicycle or public transport by 2024, and to reduce the traffic by 21%. But can a city really take its streets back from cars? Whilst this plan may be even more ambitious than Sadar's original vision, it's already having success. This is how it works. You take nine blocks from Sadar's grid system to create a larger square known as a super block. You block off the inside to through traffic such as buses and freight trucks. They now have to drive around the perimeter. The speed limit for cars on the inside is just 10 kilometers per hour and the street side parking is replaced with under street parking. This then creates a pleasant streetscape with much more space for markets, events and pedestrian walkways. There is a clear priority of people over cars, therefore creating a better standard of living both physically and mentally. What you are seeing now is the green space in Barcelona before and after the superblocks are implemented. A big difference indeed. Whilst creating these superblocks, they will also increase the efficiency of public transportation, incentivizing people to ditch individual car journeys. Further development of the superblocks includes green roofs, water harvesting, rainwater management, and tree plantings, eventually transforming the city to become a green oasis. Whilst the concept is sound, the plans weren't without their doubters. There was a large community resistance due to gentrification concerns. There was a worry that these superblocks would slowly just become a place for wealthier individuals to occupy and the current residents would slowly be priced out. They counteracted this by introducing a pilot of the plan in areas with social housing. They've also laid out their full plan, which shows they want to create green public open spaces everywhere, not just a few hotspots for the rich. Another concern was from local shop owners. Their argument was that restricted car movement would affect their business and their customer base would fall. However, in one of the planned Superbock areas, only 5% of customers access the commercial premises via car, and there's also off-street parking to cater for them. The plans also allow for passage of some vehicles for loading and unloading of goods. Whilst their concerns are valid, what you consistently see around the world when cities design their streetscapes to prioritise human beings over cars, you actually attract more people. People walking, enjoying the scenery, checking out the local businesses. Superblocks are good for business. Regardless of the outcome, keeping people at the centre of decisions will be key not just for Barcelona, but for all major cities as the world population grows. Gone are the days where each resident comes with a car. We must find innovative ways for people to live close together while supporting a healthy, low emission lifestyle. And sometimes we must look to the past to find answers for our future.